Guys, what's up? In this video, I'm super excited to talk about four new features that Framer has introduced in their latest spring event. The first one is Workshop, which basically is an AI assistant allowing you to build coded components with exposed properties and a lot of magical stuff. The second one is Vector Editing and Vector Sets, which allows you to draw shapes, have vector sets, which you're going to talk about later, and animate the stroke effect. The third one is Advanced Analytics, which allows you to create funnels, A-B test your websites, and track different clicks, which is pretty awesome. The fourth one, last and the very least, is our is a wireframer feature, which in my opinion is pretty useless, so I'm not even gonna talk about it that much. So let's get started. The first feature is the Workshop AI. So it basically is a panel that allows you to create some awesome coded uh, components just by typing or interacting with that particular Workshop tool. You can go ahead and ask it to generate something specific, or you can use some of the already populated options there, like for example, an animated clock. The animated clock not only is a visually animated clock, it actually runs based on the time that's there as well. You can even have it to show ticks. You can have some of the change the colors because the component or the AI itself expose those properties and all of that stuff. You can even ask it to then keep on doing certain changes on top of that particular component to tweak it the way that you like. The other thing that you can obviously do is you can create your own custom component, which is a coded component, like for example, a card that has an image inside of it and on hover, you have a particular effect. You can also say maybe on that particular hover effect, I actually want a white glow and it's gonna go ahead and actually do that changes and update that particular component, which honestly is pretty freaking amazing. All of these things are there for you to access. If you don't like a particular change that you've done, you can even go back in history. All of this is available as a coded file, so you can play around with that, which is pretty amazing. Here are just, I think, some examples that Framer demonstrated, which can be done with this particular tool. I honestly am pretty excited about it, and I couldn't wait to start using it. So definitely do check it out. I think this is already going to be available for you, or hopefully it's going to be available today. The next thing that they've introduced our vector editing or upping their vector editing capabilities. Now, obviously this does not mean that this is going to be at the level of Figma or let's say Adobe Illustrator, definitely not, but they're just obviously trying to get better than what they were before. So it's definitely a welcome change and we can only imagine that it's going to keep on improving in the future. So it's really easy to create these. You can even go ahead and actually combine parts and do a bunch of stuff with that as well. The next thing I'm excited about in this particular thing are vector sets. So you can have a bunch of shapes and you can draw them or place them in something like vectors. So it basically creates a set, like for example, the component variants that we used to create. So this allows you to create really awesome icon sets or other types of vector things as well that are really easy to switch and really easy to play around with. As you can see, you just go to vectors, you create them and awesome stuff. If you already have something that you've already created, you can also add that or create a vector set out of it. Very similarly, if you have a bunch of SVGs, you can just drop them directly in Framer and create a vector set out of that too, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the other thing that you can do is once you actually include a vector from a vector set, all of those vector icons are now displayed from that particular set. So it's really easy to switch without going through the hassle of creating all of those variables and stuff. Then you also have properties that you can expose like normal components as well. So it's really easy to create different types of effects as well. Even if you have a single icon, you can go ahead and change colors, change backgrounds, even do animations potentially, and all of that stuff. Another thing I'm pretty excited about are effects in general. They've added a stroke effect. So now if you have an SVG, you can actually animate strokes to create really awesome looping animations or even a one-time animation, or hover animations, and all of that stuff, similar to what you see here, which is pretty amazing. I feel like this is going to be really awesome. So I'm super excited about what you can achieve here and really excited to what people are going to create with this. The third thing that they've introduced, which is pretty awesome, are advanced analytics. I feel like Webflow, has been the go-to tool for businesses, but now I feel like Framer is trying to capture that market too. This is going to be one of those tools that are gonna help people be more trustworthy of Framer because now you can have, or you can even set your own funnels by adding specific tracking IDs to specific things that you wanna to track to, specific clicks that you wanna track on, create specific funnels, see how things are performing, and basically link all of those things and have a lot more uh, powerful analytics. The most important feature, however, I feel like is actually this, which is the control variants, or sorry, which is the A-B testing. Uh, I call them variants as well. Sometimes you may call that. So you can have variants between 
or do tests between two different types of variants for let's say your hero sections, maybe even buttons, maybe slight changes and stuff along those lines. Anyone who's working in conversion rate optimization is probably using A-B testing for the most part. I mean, this is such a crucial feature and it gives you a response of how both of these different variants are performing and then you can decide to stop them and keep the one that's performing really well, which is amazing. And it's going to be available today, but only on the business plans, if I understood that correctly. The fourth and most useless thing are Wireframer or this Wireframer tool, which basically allows you to create horrible, uh, really basic layouts using AI. I'm not sure how people are impressed by this or why even Framer presented this because it's it doesn't even it doesn't seem to generate a lot of complex layouts but I mean I'm imagining they're going to uh, improve it in the future but this functionality is severely limited but other than that pretty excited about the direction Framer is heading in and the possibilities that we have now so that's pretty much it take care bye